name is Raul Cárdenas Osuna. I'm very pleased to be here right now. I'm presenting this, this group of people. And what, 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 what we're presenting here today is something called Art Projects, which has been part of Art Basel from the very beginning, from Art Basel in Switzerland to Art Basel here in Miami. It, it's always about public interventions. For the most part, it has been mostly about sculptural works. But now, it's a little different. I mean, it, first of all, it's going from seven projects to almost double those uh, to 13 projects. And a lot of those projects doesn't have to do actually with only sculptural things, but as you will see, with art that has to do with participation. And the people that we have here in the panel to speak about it is uh, Patrick Charpenel, which is the curator of art projects of this year, and I think next year too. And, and, and Cristina Leir, uh, we, we, she, she's a, an artist participating in the, in, the, in, the, in the art projects today, and Eduardo Avaroa, no, from Mexico. So guys, first of all, Mr. Patrick Charpenel, who is, will give us an overview and an overall of what art projects are this year. Uh, thank you, thank you, Raúl. Um, so thank you for everyone that that uh, here with us. Uh, our projects uh, this year. I was invited to be the curator for this year, and um, the first thing I, I did is read about uh, the way that it has been happening in the years before, and um, and I begin thinking um, not about on, only the potential that a project like this has but also of the, the, the things I could uh, add, how this uh, could generate new, new uh, situations. And uh, that's why I decided to, to put works that uh, not, with all, not only being sculptures, but it would be works that understand, understand the city context and works that will uh, generate the dynamic, social dynamics in the city. So um, first, I, I also decided to, to, to try to have uh, a bigger quantity of, of uh, pieces. Uh, and uh, the dynamic, the format of uh, art projects is very particular. Uh, we have to first wait for the proposals the gallery sent. Then after we check the proposals, we are able to uh, contact galleries in, in order to add uh, m more proposals, more, more, more pieces. So, um, so after I, I got the proposals and I had the opportunity of selecting some of these projects, uh, I began contacting galleries in order to see if some of the artists I like would be interested in sending, uh, sending pieces for, for this project. And after a while I begin, um, I begin building a, a project and now, uh, I, I uh, reach. I, I was able to to invite 13 artists, uh, and uh, and I think most of this works really in different ways, uh, generate reactions uh, in the city and generate different uh, dynamics. Uh, I am I'm here now with two of the artists that I select. Um, one is a local artist. Uh, um, the only besides the, the case of Claire Fontaine, that is a couple, the only women that is participating, uh, and I'm really, really, really happy to, to, to have you here, Cristina, and also Eduardo Avaroa, which is an artist that I know for a long, long time. We have uh, worked together in many, many projects, and uh, he signed a proposal uh, that I think for the first time is using the, the sea, the, the, the site of the, the beach, and it's, well, I, I, I don't want to talk about the work. I think it should be the artist who, who does it. But uh, I would like, if it's possible, to open a discussion, a discussion uh, about uh, the, the, the great possibilities that uh, a social and specific context is, can offer and how, in your particular case, you, you were able to deal with it. I don't know who, if you want to. Hello? Oh. Um, well, I'm from Miami, and so for me, it was actually the site that Patrick picked between the trees I thought was really perfect for my project. It made it come to life. 
And um, my work, a lot of my work is inspired by Miami since I grew up here. Um, I think my, Miami, you experience nature from a very urban context. It's um, very artificial, glitzy. Um, the environment here, the landscape is very created and manufactured. Uh, so all of those things are background inspiration for my work. But it was a great opportunity to create an installation, I think, where um, you know, inside the bubble, you can peer inside and see a whole world onto itself. And um, also for my project, this project, I had done a different version of it for the Athens Biennale last summer. So once I started talking with Patrick about doing it here, I wanted to find a connection that would be site specific to make it work specifically for Miami and for the site. And in my research, I found an event that um, in 1926, there was a ship called Prince Valdemar, which was a Danish warship. At the time, it was the premier warship, and it was coming to Miami to be a luxurious hotel, which I think is funny, because now my South Beach is still all about luxurious hotels. Um, and the ship capsized in the harbor and blocked trade from coming in or out, and it's considered to be the symbol of the first real estate crash in Florida. Um, so for me, it was like a perfect, reference of just imagining all these luxury goods washed up against the shore and how it would be overgrown by nature and it relates to my work. So that's uh, the inspiration behind it and how it came together. So. Only so you can... Um, uh, Christina made in the Collins Park yeah. this, this like uh, uh, igloo. Yeah, it's, or, a, it's a greenhouse uh, in a it's, geodesic which, which dome a green, yeah. tent. <laughs> So it's it's when I, it's very visible. It's an the it's an, a very important uh, site here in the Miami Dix, District uh, Design District, not uh, Miami Beach District. Mm -hmm. And so only because the image is not there, the images you you are seeing in the in the monitor, uh, it's uh, things that are related to the the idea. It's not exactly the same works and the same artists. Some of them are in the project. But um, I will ask you if you can to, to go and see the Christina Lee's <laughs> in Collins Park. So, my turn? Yeah. Hi. Uh, what I tried to do in this project is, try, uh, is to utilize, uh, to uh, uh, produce something that is already uh, integrated into the landscape. and. One of the things that I saw uh, was possible is, uh, is these parasail rides that are very popular in, in most uh, beach resorts. We have them in Mexico, we have them in, in Veracruz, we have them in Acapulco, in Puerto Vallarta, which is the first place that I tried to do something like this. For Art Basel Miami Beach, I am proposing a series of parasail rides for the people who assist to the fair uh, I am. Um, uh, I think that the parasail ride is is really safe, but also it is. Uh, it has this thing of getting to uh, that you do something that you don't do every day, and my proposal was, as you may have seen behind me in one of the images, is to give this parasail uh, a caption that uh, we have a parasail ride for each day of the week. So we'll have seven parachutes, one from, for each day of the week. Uh, Art Projects is going to be open for three days, so we're having Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. My idea is basically that uh, it's a very public place, uh, the sign on, on the parasail ride, usually full with some kind of publicity. And uh, for me, this was a, an opportunity of making a statement about the passing of time. Sometimes when we think about these uh, parachutes, we think about leisure, but also, in a sense, the thrill of, of being in a parachute, be it this one or, or a parachute that falls from the, sky, from the sky, is that time for us may end in the process. It's some sort of risk, risk that we're taking in which our days may be somehow numbered. And that is the irony for me with this, with this piece. Also thinking about the idea that a tourist basically what tries to do is forget the day they live in. 
So when we're in the beach, we don't want to know if it's a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday or anything. We just want to forget about this constant uh, category, uh, these constant names that we give to each day. And this because I, uh, I don't want to be too long. Please tell me. Uh, Phil, please, and, please. Uh, this, for example, for me, it's interesting that to think that every day from now on and before us can be either a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and that it is already st stabilized. It's not going to change. From 10, uh, 100 years from now, we already know if some day is Tuesday or some day is a Monday, and it's somehow completely stabilized for us. No, it's a past. It's something that is almost written in the sky for us because we already accept it as a reality and seldom question this standard that we're using. It would be interesting to have a no-name day, for example, and a day that doesn't have any kind of astrological or, uh, for example, the days that we have in, uh, in Saturday is because we, we are naming Saturn, the, the, the god of, of uh, what is it? Uh, Saturn is the, it's a Roman god of, uh, I think it's the sky, no? Is it? Uh, any, I forgot who Saturn is, but anyway. Uh, in any way, uh, my idea was uh, sort of ironic uh, in a sense that uh, everybody supposedly knows uh, that, that information, but to who, those who might, might forget it, we have a reminder on the parachute. So I, uh, I would like that the people that are using the parachutes the parasails, which is the actual name of this, uh, this device, when they use it, uh, they, uh, they have an interesting experience. And I hope that many of you who haven't done it try these parachutes uh, during the, the next three days. One thing, guys, I mean, it, it has always been very important, and I, I know from your work, the, the action of participation and and, 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 and well, also the integration into the context in the way, well, who more than you to know the context of Miami, you being from here. But then aside from that, what, what are the other artists and how do they integrate into the context of what's happening in the, in the art project this year? Specifically because you're going, I mean, you have almost half, I mean, you're almost twice as more artists than other times, right? And a lot of them has to do with this with these situations and with things activate and happen in the community, right? What are those things that are happening? For me, it was very important that people that go and, and begin uh, walking in the streets and trying to find all the pieces, I think if you have only four or five or seven pieces as it happened before, it becomes maybe funny, but I don't think there is really a exp uh, whole experience that you can have when you're dealing with different parts of the city, with different um, uh, specific contexts, so, so, uh, human and social context. So I wanted really, I thought that having a, a bigger number of, of artists and bigger number of experience would make sense in, in, in the context of, of what, what I think should be the purpose of art projects. Um, but only to, because we were talking a, a lot about many things, but I would like quickly to to name uh, the artists that uh, were selected. Uh, there is uh, Gonzalo, in order, there is uh, Eduardo Baroa, who uh, presented, is presenting the parasail. There is Carmelo Bermejo, who uh, the last Sunday will, do, will be doing a fire, uh, um, fire, burning. Uh, fire burning text that says recession. So it would be at the end of, of the third, um, uh, I think a, a very uh, strong statement about the uh, social situation, the economic situation. Um, there will be, there is a Clairefontaine uh, um, um, text with um, um, neon, on neon, on neon, that is uh, near, um, uh, what's the name of this street? Um, uh, ah, the, where, where all the stores are, are um, Lincoln, near Lincoln, uh, in, in, this, in the middle of the stores, uh, a, a text that says, uh, capitalism kills love, a lighting text. Uh, there is the Kaoji Marais uh, film at the Botanical Garden that is about wing and bubbles. Uh, it's a very, very beautiful and poetic uh, 
video, a very, very nice uh, film. There is the Gonzalo Lebrija uh, Big Fish, the marlin. That is, uh, I, don't, I remember which, uh, on the way to Collins Park when you go out in a pink building, there is this fish that jump in, uh, through the water. You see, it, it looks like it jumped from, it jumped from the water to the building, and because of the nose of the fish, it got stuck on the building. Uh, and you, you have uh, Christina's piece at uh, Collins Park. The, there is a very, very important piece for me in this project that is Jorge Mayet uh, house. It's a Cuban, it's a Cuban house that uh, very, they're very common in Cuba. They're the, the most cheap and common houses that uh, Cubans uh, build in, in, in different parts of the, of the country. And we're putting this house facing the, all the buildings, facing the, the, the touristic district of, uh, of Miami Beach. And uh, unfortunately, because of, of uh, weather, <laughs> uh, things that are not, we don't depend on off, we haven't been able to, to install the piece. But I think tomorrow morning, you will be able to see it. There is the, the William Popper uh, piece at the Botanical Garden. Uh, which is the Black Factory. It's a very complex in installation. And um, um, I, it, it's a, how do you say, truck? It's uh, like a UPS uh, truck, <laughs> yeah, more like or a, less, yeah, yes. that turns into this weird yeah, lab, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, like a weird lab. Where, uh, of, um, it's a very, it's a very when, when now you want to see the installation, you want to see the sound, etc. But it's a very ambitious project that he's been working for a long time on, on, on this piece. And um, there is a, a dynamic that very often, when in different presentations, it has been used this way, where people give objects that, that are related to the black culture. And also the artist gets uh, uh, icons that are, have to do with, uh, with the black culture. Then after the pieces uh, sometimes get sell, and with the money, they go to foundations. Uh, but now it's, it's functioning in a different way. You have, you have to see it. There is also the George Rique uh, sculpture. That is a piece that is reacting to a very important uh, physical element that is the wing. And I think it's a, I think at least that for the people that we have been already a week, sometimes the wing in Miami is very, very strong. And it's a, it's, it's a piece that is playing with this physical uh, aspect of, of the city. And there is uh, also a deer, we call it deer is the, um, made by Mark Swanson, that is, um, um, I, I'm bad from the streets, it's in uh, Washington, Washington and the 17th, yes, I'm right, Washington and, and the 17th Street, um, and it's a very, very um, it has, the elements are like, like uh, small diamonds, it look, they look like the small diamonds, and it looks like this, this animal was lost in the middle of, of Miami. Um, in, in, there is a very important, uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy about, about this project, the Santiago Sierra uh, No World Tour. In this, in this precise uh, uh, complex uh, political situation that we, we're facing, uh, Santiago is making a tour mainly in the States, but it's going also, also to many other countries, a tour with a gigantic No sculpture that is in a truck. It, it looks like a carnival truck, but instead of having, it has this gigantic no. And it's been very interesting following, because we have been moving the, the, the truck in different parts of the city, the reaction of the people with this open no. And people scream, people get angry, people react in very different ways, but, but it has, it's because, because uh, I was discussing now that with Raul and with uh, Eduardo Baroa, that uh, Duchamp used to say that he didn't like to use the word no because there was always, you, get, you get in problems when you, use, when you say no. And that, um, and the, 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 when, when, you, you, when you say no, I think that there is a, it's, it's, to begin, it's a very strong reaction to, to many things. And when it's so open, it becomes uh, very uh, personal, everyone uh, has a different uh, reason to say no. So it's been very, very interesting like following uh, uh, the, the, the piece in, the, in different sites of Miami. There is also the Rigri Tariabanilla uh, performance that will happen tomorrow at 8 at the W Hotel. That will be, Rigri has been collecting for many years uh, political t-shirts. 
and um, from every from every part of, of the world. And these political t-shirts, they, they can be like uh, uh, against war or against a, a, a country or political system. And um, and uh, he's making a fashion fashion. What is this? Fillet, fashion. Yeah, a catwalk. Catwalk, a fashion in the my, my W Hotel, where students will be wearing these T-shirts, uh, in this very fancy hotel, in this very uh, uh, fancy context. And the last piece is a Franz Best uh, bench sculpture, a very very big one, that it was for the first time installed in the beach, and it's very funny because. Uh, it's, uh, it's in, made in fiberglass, and people are really using it uh, as, as a bench or boys, they play on, on it. So it's, I think, the, uh, very, uh, the right context to place a, a sculpture with this, uh, with this form and with these characteristics. Um, and I, I, would, I really love the way that it's integrated. It, it, it's functioning and how it, 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 it integrates very well the, 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 this touristic uh, side of the city. This, this is a question for all of you guys. I mean, from yeah. site specific to the thing that has to do with this performatic aspect of the yeah. work. How do you guys deal with the surprises that happen with the reactions of people when, when you're just about to open your world? I mean, for the first time, you're going to show the parasailing uh, tomorrow, right? At 10 a.m. I don't remember the name of the beach, but, but and, and yours has been open already? Yeah. And, but how do you prepare and you measure up to see what's going to happen and those kind of things? Um, well, I think it's exciting once things become alive and then have their own life. I mean, I, I think once a project's done, you kind of just wait and see what happens, not so much project exactly what you think. Um, but it's, you know, I think that it, the best thing is when people engage the way that you want them to. You know, when people are really looking and getting down and spending time, I think, you know, and I think they, watching people just be on their daily errands and having to go through the park and then coming across it and having experience, it's, makes me excited about it. <laughs> it's what I had hoped for. So. Because there's some aspects in which, I mean, I remember the, the, the one that you, the, the work that you presented here nine years ago, you know, the ag agro, Agro corrido performance, right? You practically, if people don't participate, it's painful for them. If you keep <laughs> on saying it, man. Well, yes, uh, I think that accidents are are a big part of art making. I think it's not only art making. If we think about evolution, there there would be no evolution without mistakes when you copy one, from one organism to the next. So uh, art making is mostly a way of understanding how to make your mistakes productive, in, in my view. Of course, accidents in the case of the parasail thing are nothing that we really <laughs> can, <laughs> can wish for. But I, of course, this is very safe. But in a, in a sense, it wasn't planned for, for example, this wasn't planned for Miami. This was planned for other beaches. But when, when we had this opportunity of uh, proposing to Patrick some works, we said, hey, Miami is perfect for this piece. And even though it, it took a long process of negotiation with the people who make this parasail business in Miami, uh, eventually we had more than we bargained for. It, but I, mean, I think that the parachutes look great. It was great. Now, when it comes to the participation of the public, it's precisely this surprise that makes it interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, uh, when one makes a, a piece like that, in my experience, you can imagine what people are going to do. But many times people want to, paradoxically, sometimes they try to make the project fail. I don't know why. <laughs> and are uh, to sabotage. <laughs> this, yeah, sabotage. <laughs> I mean, sabotage is a big part of the fun for some people in participating <laughs> works. And this is, has been like that since, since Capro. I, I have read, of course, I wasn't present. But I have read that uh, Capro or Joseph Boys, when they made participation pieces, it was nothing like you're free to express yourself. No, it was a program that you had to fulfill in order to participate in a work by Capro or Joseph Boys to the point that they, they seemed like some little dictator telling people what to do. 
And in a sense, uh, what I'm trying to do is a little bit less intrusive. Uh, and I think that other art artists have generated similar positions in the sense that uh, I, I think, for example, that in a parachute ride, some people are scared, some people are exhilarated, some people for, might forget about what is written. Most people that ride the parachute as it is, they don't, they don't care about what is written in the parachute. No, they forget about it. And my interest in this work is that while you're flying in the thing, you have your own, you have your own experience. I, I, and I'm interested in that indication of, of that, that moment of uh, somehow losing yourself for a second. When I, I've done some parachute rides, and it, it is interesting because sometimes you want it to end really quickly because you're scared, right? And sometimes when you're having a good time, you just want to keep on, no? And you forget about time, and you know, this is important for me. It's, uh, I've been thinking about um, the implications that a piece like uh, yours, which is a kind of calendar, can have in a, in a touristic resort. Because as you were saying, people try to forget about time because you come here to relax and to forget about responsibilities. But the moral implications are really it's something that amazes me. Because when you then remember what day of the week is and maybe what is the time, then there's a lot of implications of what am I doing here? I have work to do. <laughs> Someone is waiting for me. There are sort of implications that it's very funny to, to, to make this reaction in, a, in, in, in this specific context. So I was really, really amazed to, to, to just to hypothetically uh, imagine the, what will be the, the, the reaction of many people that will be not only in the, para, in the parasail, but also in the, in the beach, uh, seeing the, the day of the week. <laughs> so I, I find that very interesting. I, I, I'm sorry, guys, but, but talking about sabotage and participation, and sadly about <laughs> sabotage and participation, I think our time is through, <laughs> right? So, so well, thank you, guys, and that's about all we've got. <laughs> thank you.